Well, today I'd like to bring a couple of updates and a few corrections. Now, in a previous video, I surmised that uh, the Mount Warning Forest Hideaway, it had been said that Pete Evans has just bought into it. Uh, this isn't a, a confirmation or denial of that fact. This is more a clarification of the three places that came up for the listing and where I said Peter E might be Peter Evans. It's a bit of a coincidence. Uh, yes, it is a coincidence. Uh, Peter and Maxine Ridgway were the couple that owned it before the current people, uh, which one of them is Lisa Hsu, and they now live in America. So ultimately they have got nothing to do with this beautiful place up here. Uh, I was, however, able to confirm with through direct contact with Lisa Shu that they are negotiating selling the property. She was very evasive about answering any questions. Uh, so I cannot confirm or deny that Pete Evans is buying into it. One would consider how evasive she was that um, she may have been protecting a well-known personality's identity from gossip. And the thing being gossip is that you actually allow gossip to happen when you are so evasive and you will not answer a direct question and then you leave it up to other people and uh, yes yeah, so let, let's just say that uh, Lisa Shu, when she said about how she was disappointed in the community for the rumors and the gossip it, <laughs> I was a little disappointed that she actually said that and the course of the conversation where every question that kept coming back and asking her about well are you selling are you getting out she would just come back with another question so someone that asks questions to avoid giving answers um, well that was just the experience that was encountered when uh, the owner that the only thing they can confirm is that they've they, which I'm assuming is the two ABNs, and again, if I find out anything different, I will let you know. But Lisa Shu, uh, they, whoever she means by they, are selling and leaving. So they've been there since 2011, which they would have taken over from Peter and, Peter and Maxine Ridgeway, or they bought it off them and they moved to America. So that's the update on that one. I can't, uh, con can't confirm or deny that Pete Evans is involved because, um, well, people allow gossip and rumours because they are evasive and people will come up with their own conclusions. And let's face it, if you've got nothing to hide, why not speak? I do. <laughs> Anyway, so the next issue is um, a quick note on the water reserve issue at 3222, the water catchment. Uh, I will be following that up. Uh, that is on my agenda, but I have got other priorities this week. Uh, I'm putting a lot of stuff together so that it can be effective when I action it with uh, criminal charges. So that some things I'm not going to be able to get into more until I've got to the other side of achieving what I want to get to. And a correction too, by way of in past videos, I said that um, it's only about the ABN structure and the ATSIC structure. It's something that I've noticed because back in the 80s uh, and then in the 90s when everything changed, Everybody that participated uh, in any business activity, even a, a non-profit organisation, had to have an ABN. And every receipt had to have an ABN on it. This is, you know, for chasing up after the GST kind of stuff. They actually set that in motion before they introduced the GST so that 
that structure would be there to monitor people's activities and make sure they paid their share of GST. So I've noticed now that this is not the case. See, it was always the case that everybody had to have an ABN if they were doing something, even a charity. That's no longer the case. And a business, uh, a proprietary limited company that's re registered at ATSIC also had to have an ABM because that was the root foundation of it. And at ATSIC, when you became um, a director of a company, it used to have to have two individuals. Now it has changed that you only need one person for a company. So a person can be a sole owner, director, shareholder, instead of jointly, as it always used to have to be a minimum of two legal entities or one business, you know, a, another proprietary limited. But it always had to end up back to two responsible parties. And that was directors, not just our director secretary, because now having a secretary is actually optional. So the way it works now is that I've seen companies that have registered with an ACN number three years before they've registered an ABN and activated that. And uh, it, it's not the standard tied in system that it used to be. I can actually see how they've taken away the ba base foundation of everything having to be registered through the ABN now you've got to go to ATSIC for ones that are specifically listed there and not with an ABN. And you've also got to go to um, the Australian Charities Register to see if there's any non-profit organisations or, uh, registered there. So they've split it all up in the ability to check things. But uh, that was just more or less a correction on if you've watched any of my past videos where I said it was a certain way, it has changed and it's clear that this is the way that it works now. So the next thing I want to get on to is uh, 3222 Kyogle Road and also the Mount Burrell Commercial District. Now you might be wondering why I keep bringing in the Mount Burrell Commercial District and why it is of concern in this whole nightcap on Minjimbo community. Well the thing is that right from the outset it was the intention and should have happened that members bought 3222 as the land that they lived on and were the community and the Mount Burrell commercial aspect as the business that would help bring in income and support that community. So this has always been the intention and it has had to have been investigated who's involved with the Mount Burrell commercial district simply because there were members of the nightcap on Minjimbal or back then when they called themselves Bulla Bulla, that bought in to the Mount Burrell Commercial um, Proprietary Limited as part of their share and contribution. And it was recognised and made them a member of Nightcap on Minjimble. So in enabling to see who was actually a past lost investor who didn't receive any monies back, you need to look at both addresses and what's going on with them. Now we already know that 3222 has gone under the uh, auctions hammer back in June. It was a receiver liquidator's sale to sell the property. Now in September they couldn't come up with, well it was extended settlement because they couldn't come up with um, the purchaser, couldn't come up with the money. So it was, settlement was extended to the 18th of September. It cost another $100,000 deposit. And then, uh, well, it was about a week ago, the liquidator, which is Steve Starts, has advised that he's put settlement date back to the 18th of November. 
So the settlement for the purchaser coming up with the final um, monies to purchase 3222 is supposedly going to happen on the 18th of November. Now another thing that is supposedly going to happen on that exact same date is when the lease for the Mount Burrell General Store is handed over to the members of the Nightcap on Minjimbal community. So whether that is a, another leaseholder that has purchased that lease, I don't know whether they've purchased the lease. All I know is that on the 18th of November, the lease is apparently going to be handed to whoever represents the Nightcap on Minjimbal community whichever one it is that comes down and says, radio, give it to me. So if you invested in the Mount Barrow commercial aspect of it, and there are people that did invest back then, and they still hold shares now. So I cannot actually classify them as past lost investors, but I also can in a way because of the way that the whole Mount Burrow business district has been run into the ground. We've had a thriving business district and shop by shop, the people have walked away. And that's another correction I need to make on the Mount Burrell fruit and veggie shop. Now, I've been advised that uh, the people that had the death in the family and walked away from it were the previous leaseholders. And after they walked away, Mark McMurtry and his wife thought, well, we'll move into the shop and start it back up again. So that's ultimately the position with that. I don't know whether they hold the lease to give back to themselves as members of the community, but you could say that the members of the community hold the lease on the fruit and veggie shop now, and it's empty. And now I'd say that they also hold the lease on the Sphinx Rock Cafe after the owners moved away, walked away from that. The owners of the lease, the squires, after they walked away from this beautiful thriving business. You know, I mean, look, four and a half out of five stars. And I must say, the Sphinx Rock Cafe had a reputation, you know, word of mouth was always good. And now, gone and they're going to apparently replace it with another member uh pete evans so pete evans going to set up his what paleo way <laughs> in the mount Burrell, uh commercial district as uh in the sphinx rock cafe is he going to change the name too and is he going to be buying mount warning forest hideaway and if he's lost millions out of just his paleo way failed adventure, how can he afford all this? Well, I suppose he might have lost over a million. Who knows, he might have made 10 million before he actually lost that. And the thing is now one would actually look at all those people that paid $99. How many of them haven't got benefit out of that money? I mean, how many people just signed up and then they go there to use it and bang, it's shut down. So he's got one failed enterprise after another that's losing him more money after more money. And the unconfirmed rumour is that he's now buying Mount Warning Forest Hideaway and it's going to turn it into a, a, what, a yoga retreat. Well, why not? It seems like any idea will do for Pete Evans doesn't matter whether it's a good idea or whether it's sustainable you know he'll just get other people to invest in it and then go oops pulled the plug sorry lost a million sorry <laughs> I made so much out of you before then and tell me how is I don't know what paleo way is but essentially all I can imagine it is is just sticking up a bunch of recipes in order each day how hard can that be and why would you need to close it down People are still got to go and buy their own products, don't they? As I said, in ignorance, I don't know. I'm just guessing. 
I don't even want to look at it because, you know, a flaky idea is a flaky idea. If I wanted to live like a caveman, I'd eat like one. I might remind you that the caveman is the classic image in the tarot for, uh, you know, how the caveman comes out of his cave. He's the fool that um, goes out not knowing anything about life. So ultimately, if you're going back to caveman day, you're going back to a very ignorant state of being where we are about to embark on a journey of learning. So I'd actually like to talk to someone that's got a little bit further along the track in understanding than caveman mentality. <laughs> anyway, that's enough of Pete Evans. That's also enough of uh, the update for the Mount Burrow commercial. Actually, no, I forgot to mention that uh, to put this in perspective now, we need to look at the Mount Burrow business district that there were, well, there are four businesses. There's the Caravan Park, there's a fruit and veggie shop here on this little image here. You've got the general store, people call in here for petrol, and over there is the Sphinx Rock Cafe. It's a lovely little area. Called in there many a times, actually. But um, I can't call in there now. Well, I could. But I, I don't think it'd have the same atmosphere, the same friendly locals, and you know the it it just and it's not going to get the support from the locals because essentially now you've got three businesses that have had successful leaseholders walk away from it because they they can't be bothered with all the goings on. You see, um, in the general store. I've introduced it in uh, previous videos where <laughs> they'd bring down the bus with potential investors and let's bring all in the potential investors into the shop and introduce them to the locals. And you know, when I heard, I'd read that, I, I had just finished watching this thing on, um, oh, what was it, the dollhouse where she'd infiltrated this cult. And this cult every week would go into town for supplies and they'd all get off the bus and they'd be singing all happy and everything. And they'd go into the shop and it just changes the whole atmosphere and you know, it's a bit weird and everything. And then it brought to mind my own experiences when I was living at Carabin in Queensland, where the Carabin International Community did exactly the same thing. They would bring in the international students and it just changes the whole atmosphere of the shop because there's this these whole bunch of people that don't fit in with the community, they don't mingle with the community and they pretty much are very secretive. So, you know, there's a lot of things to be said for uh, um, what goes on in a general store in an area. <laughs> and now, the Mount Burrell General Store well, if you're living in the area, how much is it going to cost you in petrol to go and fill up down the road now? To get back home, you're going to have to put more in just to make up for the trip. It's costing you money. And it's not like petrol is cheap. And where is the nearest servo? You know, it isn't just, you know, five minutes down the road. You might as well go into Merba. And you might as well do a big shop. And that's not what your general store is for. Your general store supports the community. And you know what? This whole Mount Burrell Commercial Proprietary Limited has not only failed to look after the community so that it can be supported by it, but it's pretty well pushed it out. Now I've just brought up this PDF. It's uh, a current ATSIC search of who's involved with the Mount Burrell commercial. But I'm drawing your attention here to, I might enlarge that, hang on. Right, so I'll draw your attention to the shareholders because uh, a lot of these shareholders um, are involved with the community and bought into the community via doing so. Like uh, Rainmaker Group Holdings holds the majority shares 
I'm not going to get into who's who in that respect. But uh, people that are actually shareholders in the Mount Burrell Commercial District have an interest in the Sphinx Rock Cafe, Mount Burrell General Store, the Mount Burrell Fruit and Veg, and the Caravan Park. Now, the people that are managing the business side of it have a responsibility to these shareholders to not make decisions whereby they put valid businesses that are making money out of business and seize those leases and control of those assets so that other members may conduct their activities out of that from there on in. It is not supported by the community. Now, the guy at the top of this list, Rhyme Earth Healer, I have seen posts on Facebook and all over the place. This guy is just not happy. He has still got his shares in there, but he pretty well knows they're worth nothing. And from what I've seen, he states that 200 shares cost him $200,000, which may explain why the shares are valued at $3.75 million. So the whole Mount Burrell Commercial District 3.7 million and all these people if Rhyme Earth Healer paid 2,000 for his 200 shares one could say that it's uh, 100,000 for a share. So you can see that some of these individuals have been here right from the outset they've changed a few of them out but um, they're also member companies uh, Nightcap on Mingeable member companies, Mode Investments is, Dixon Rainmaker, Rainmaker Group Holdings, Michaela Linnell Lowe, um, aka Pedersen. Between these members, they control the decisions about what's going on. They hold the majority vote, and they they out. You know, this guy with his 200 shares and all for the money he paid in, he's got no say in ultimately what goes on in the company because he gets outvoted by the majority shareholders. So what's going on at Mount Burrell Commercial District has affected a lot of people and some people are still in there hoping that maybe the business might pick up and they might get some return back out of it. But now we've got all empty businesses. The Sphinx Rock Cafe, empty. The general store, walking away, 8th of November. Who's taking that over? The fruit and veggie shop, closed. The caravan park, well, seems to house members of the community that can't live with uh, spouses at the community. That's the rumour anyway, but it, it's got nothing business going as far as profitability and all the decisions made by the director and secretary of the Mount Burrow Commercial has put it solely out of um, viability. Every decision they have made has run it into the ground. Every business has closed down, walked away. Now, what does that say about the people running the business? I think it says a lot when the people that have invested in it too are, you know, just hoping and praying. But how can they get, even like with um, Rhyme Earth Healer, how could he get his... 200 shares back and sell them to anybody when all the businesses have, have closed down and nobody knows what's going on. And by the time you might open them back up, I tell you there is not many people in the community by then that are going to turn around and go, you know what, I've modified my behaviour to go out of my way to get my petrol and everything somewhere else and I'm not going to go down there and I'm not going to spend my money in your shop and fill your pockets anymore. I will not buy from you. 
So you don't have local support. The majority of people are going to give you a miss. And once it gets round that the Sphinx Rock Cafe is no longer and it's it's been taken over by a <laughs> bunch of hillbillies on the hill, nobody's going to come near it. So you better get the petrol pump work and that might be the only thing that tourists who don't know will actually stop and buy something. So your number one priority is to get that petrol pump working. You don't have a working petrol pump. You're stuffed, don't you? Anyway, I'm going to leave it on that today. I have got hours of paperwork to do. I was just taking a break to uh, give you an update. And I'll catch you next time.